This is Sebastian for Extreme Tech. All you'll be seeing of me is a bit of the back of my head and maybe my t-shirt, which is quite funny if you get a chance to see it. This is Windows 8 Consumer Preview running on a dual monitor desktop setup. Uh, it's a i7-930 overclocked 4 gigahertz. It's a pretty fast computer. It is running off a standard hard drive and not a solid state. So this is what you'll see when you log in to Windows 8 for the first time. Uh, I've installed a few things. You can see a program over there. Um, but you will get the start screen over here and you'll get your desktop over there. Now this might look kind of useful and kind of cool, but the moment you click over here, the start screen disappears. Now, before we start, I should add that hitting the start key on the keyboard will always bring the start screen back up. But, by default, there is no way to bring up the start screen from this monitor on the right. You have to come all the way over to the left, down the bottom left hand corner, and then you get the thumbnail in the bottom corner. There is no thumbnail on this screen here, for example. Likewise, the charms, which are the new, I don't know, access to the system tray, I guess. The charms are accessed up here in the top right corner of the left hand display. So here are the charms. If you try and go to the right hand display in the right corner, there are no charms up here for some reason. Now fortunately there's a fairly quick fix for this. Let's get rid of that. So we remove the taskbar from both screens. Oh sorry, so it's only on one screen. And then we move the taskbar to the other screen. Now magically the charms are on the right hand side. And the little thumbnail is down here. This is a little bit uh, finickety, by the way. It's quite hard to use at the moment. Okay, so there we go. Now we have the start screen on the right hand display. A bit more useful. Uh, it also seems that, I don't know if this is a multi-monitor setup thing, um, but dragging, moving my mouse to the right doesn't scroll the screen. If you have a mouse with a left-right jog, that will work. You can see semantic zoom here. This is a fresh installation, by the way. I haven't run anything. So let's try, sure, let's try installing an app. I haven't tried that on this, this, on this computer before, so. The reactions you see are for real. Ooh, cut the rope. It reminds me of the, what's that game I used to play at school? I think it's a drop the soap or something. Oh no, I didn't play that at school. Never mind, ignore that. And that was it. I think I just installed Cut the Rope. Can I open it from here? Yeah. Oh, it's installing, it says in the top right corner. I don't know why it takes that long to install. Oops. Oh, it's downloading. Okay. So if I click over here on the left side, I bet it goes back to the desktop. No. Okay. So it looks like... Okay. So it looks like I have this screen free to be on the desktop, and the right side is on Metro. That's quite cool. So I can open up... Ah, that's the other thing. If you look up here, we have some graphical glitching. If we open up Extreme Tech, you should subscribe to our PC Magazine Digital Edition. I can go over here. Okay. Honestly, I haven't tried this, so this is quite cool. Um, how do I... There you go. So I hit the Windows key on my keyboard, and I've gone back to this. Now we need to find Cut the Rope. Where is it? It's up here. Good. I can show you dragging and dropping, by the way. We can move this around. And if I hold down Control and Zoom, we now have the semantic zoom, which allows you to I've killed Windows Explorer. Okay, let's try that again. So I can move it 
with semantic zoom I can move it I, I think it's gonna crash again yeah okay oh well. anyway let's try this look at that I haven't installed any uh, sound drivers um, so you won't hear any sound we have options which brings up this is a that's always there basically it's kind of like a, a context settings menu although I thought it comes up from the bottom I, I thought do we have a bottom maybe that's the difference between tablets and desktops settings nothing exciting drag to cut click to cut yeah, let's just try playing. Ding dong. So I wonder if this is an HTML5 game. It probably is. Oh my god. Right. Okay. Oh. Okay. So I click on this side and that pauses. That's interesting. Okay. Okay, let's see what else. And we hit the start key and we go back here. Let's see if I can show task switching. I think I just. Okay, let's open up a few more tasks. Let's open up Internet Explorer on here. So now if I click on. See a beautiful picture every day. Set Bing as your homepage. Sure. So if I click on the left. Where is it? Oh, there we go. So, if I drag to the top left corner, as you can see, that's that's hard on a multiple desktop setup, multiple screen setup, because my mouse is jumping. And again, if I go up here in the top right, nothing happens. So this is a bit. It's not great on multiple desktops. There you go. So I'm switching between ah, desktop, with the fish, cut the rope. And then if I drag, I can do this. You can see it doesn't load in a smaller frame. Oh, I've got a fish over here as well. What are the chances? Uh, and I can... I wonder if I can drag over here. No, I can't drag that over here. I can drag that over there, though. And then... Okay. See what else I can show you. I can show you the settings. By the way, this is the new task tray down here. This is the only way to shut down the computer, which is, yes, not one of my best features. If you notice, we go back to the desktop. How do I get back? Here we go, desktop. Oh look, I got a desktop in there. That's quite cool as well. What if I can have Firefox open in here. I can. Uh, that's pretty cool. I'm not sure why I would do it, but it still it still looks cool. Okay. Okay. What will we be trying? Settings. Oh yeah. So if you're on, let's get rid of this. So if we want to shut down from here, we have to go up here, top right corner, down here to settings. Click. Power, click, and then sleep and shut down and so on. We might as well see how quick sleep is as well. Yeah? Let's see what happens. Pretty good. Is anyone counting? It's about five seconds. It was pretty fast in Windows 7, to be honest. Here's a good one. You have to drag this up with a mouse. You can't get past it by clicking. What about Enter? No? Oh, maybe that worked. I don't know. Okay, what else can I show you? We can look at some screen settings, I guess. Extend these di displays. Oh, I can show desktop only on one or two. I don't know what this is going to do. Quite excited. Oh. So it's just disabled. 
number two. I thought it was going to have Metro only on that screen or something. Okay. Oh, that wasn't as exciting as I thought. Oh, yes. Uh, so, settings. We go to charms. And here's the new flag, by the way, which just pops up that. So that's the same as hitting the flag button. Ah, oh, I can... Okay, I'll show you settings before I forget to show you. It's a bit finickety, reaching into the corners. I'm not, I'm not convinced. And you have to move the mouse to the top and then scroll down without... You only have that small margin. And I reckon that's going to get quite tiring. And incredibly tiring on anything in the middle. Okay, settings. Show start settings. Oh, I'm looking for control panel. They're all they're here as well. Maybe control panel. Hmm. Task scheduler. Scheduler. Okay. Well, maybe this is a good way to show you the new. So you hit the start key and you start typing. Control panel. There we go. What's it going to be? Is it going to be anything? Where is it? Ah, okay. Well, this is exactly the same as Windows 7. Anyway, I realized that I should have installed some games or some bigger applications like Photoshop. So I'll show you that in the next video. Um, but for now, you can see uh, that it Windows 8 works okay on the desktop. Um, it's going to take some getting used to, uh, but I'll give it a go. I'll use it for the next few weeks, see if I grow to love it or whether I grow to hate it. This has been Sebastian for Extreme Tech. Goodbye.